be embarrassed of your first piece of content. And if you're not embarrassed by it, then you've waited too long. Don't wait five years to perfect it, right? So put it out, do it, and you will learn as you're going. All right, everyone. I'm so excited today. Today's episode is very different from what we usually cover on this, and you'll see from the title. The reason why I think it's so important for our guests to come on is because there's so many small business owners who are listening to this episode right now who are wondering, who am I to share my story? Who am I to take the world stage and get featured? Well, if you need any confirmation from the universe that now is the time for you to pitch, this is it. So I actually met our guest today, Alexander Harbushka, at PodFest Orlando. I literally went to a panel and she, on in this, on the stage in front of everybody, <laughs> revealed that she has genital, genital herpes and has built an entire community around telling her story. She is a podcast host of Life with Herpes. She has entire community, mailing lists, so many people that are actively engaged with her. And from her telling her story bravely, she is able to inspire other people. So thank you so much for coming on the, on the show. Thank you, Gloria. I'm so excited. And I love when you like reached out to me at PodFest to talk about this. So I've been looking forward to our conversations here. I will say you're the only person to be on this podcast that's not a journalist or uh, or one of my PR students. Okay. Let's do it. Let's so Yeah. And and when I heard your story of saying that you basically got on stage and the first thing you said within 5 minutes was your diagnosis and mm-hmm. I was like how does this relate to podcasting or how does this relate to building our business? And it resonates so profoundly within me that I think behind every business owner is this self-doubt, self-questioning. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Yeah. And there was such a period of time, um, I would say really until probably the 2000s, that we really separated ourselves from our personal life and who we put out on, on, like on stage or who we put out as professional. I mean, just look at even cell phones, right? When I first got my first business card, I didn't put my cell phone number on it. And that was in 2005. Like, ooh, I don't want to give my personal cell phone, right? So just look at how things have changed. Now you would never use an office phone. You would give always your personal cell. Like that's just, there's always, so even that transition to, we have a personal story and doesn't mean I'm obviously talking about herpes and it doesn't mean that we have to talk about our deepest, darkest, most vulnerable um, experience, but it allows us, if we kind of lead with that compassion and that humility and know that someone else has a story just like it, um, it allows us to get more intimate and vulnerable with our, with our tribe, with our community. So what you are sharing with the world is something that is so stigmatized. A lot of people find embarrassing. Mm -hmm. A lot of people feel like is the end of the world. How did you decide to not only live with that, but get over that, that challenge and actually spread your message, get onto stages, get onto podcasts and leading with this message? Well, (laughs) so I launched a podcast in 2015 and it was called Sex, Money and Food. And I was interviewing other people. I was never opening up about my issues. Um, and never opening up about what was near and dear and maybe like sacred to my heart. I was too afraid to bring that out. And it was 2017, I was asked to speak at PodFest. And so I don't remember what the topic really was. And so I prepared this whole thing on, on, I got into financial debt at like 25. And so I prepared this whole thing and I show it to my husband, who was then my boyfriend. And he's like, no offense, but like everyone gets into debt at 25. Like, you know, it's just like, it wasn't like you had millions of dollars. You just, you had some, you had some credit card debt. You were 25. It's pretty normal. And that wasn't that deep of a story. He's like, I think you should share your story about having herpes. I was like, what? You want like, like what? And then I was like, well, how is that going to impact you professionally? And how is that going to impact me? And he's like, it's you, it's your story. It's who you are. And you're, you're passionate about it. And you're passionate about helping people. So I got on stage at PodFest in 2017 and said it. And that was the first time I've ever said it publicly. It was right kind of when 
Um, streaming, like you could stream on Facebook, like that was still pretty new. And so it was streamed and it went out and I was like, okay, here we are. Um, it was terrifying, but I, but I realized a lot of things that happen when you tell your story, it allows people to connect and they go, oh, wow, she's human or he's human or they, she has vulnerabilities or she, wow, she has something she's dealing with too. Um, other, also people come up to you and say, oh, I have it. I have this too. Mm-hmm. Or, or, or three, it just, they go, I don't have your situation, but I have my own story. And I never realized that someone else has my similar story and there's people dealing with that. So a lot of times we try to put these walls up to make us this, like, you know, I, I got my life in order and, and where, yeah, I mean, there's times when you need to like present yourself, of course, um, you don't want to necessarily show up as a victim, but we need to remember that, hey, people are going through their own thing. And, and I've made my business around this. However, um, you don't have to make your business around your vulnerability or your your fear. Yeah. But I will say that when you do, you attract mm-hmm. way more hell yes people, whether they're mm-hmm. clients, supporters. And, and I think so many people are still living in that phase where they just want to be liked by everyone. But yeah. Just from building my business and, and you from building your massive community, it's not about getting wishy-washy people who are like, mm, okay, like you want people to make a strong decision. Mm-hmm. Hell yes, I'm in her community or hell mm-hmm. no, she's not for me. Right. And I think so many people are afraid of that. Yeah. And on that, you're right. So many people are afraid. Like I want to like everybody. I want to like be a care bear and like everybody, everybody loves me. Right. And one of the things um, that I was, was potentially – insecure about or nervous about um, was partnering with people in my own area. So there's other people that are now talking about herpes. um, And I was nervous. I'm like, well, I don't know if I necessarily want to partner with them because what if my people go to their tribe and they leave my tribe? And what we have to realize is if that person is meant to find someone else, they're going to find that person. And if you can speed that process up for them and get them to the right person, then that's going to support them. And in return, it supports you. Vice versa, whoever you're partnering with, they're going to have people as well that would be better suited for you. And if you can speed that up and and ultimately lead with with the end result as the client, not so much, oh, I don't know. Well, I don't want to share what I have because they might go somewhere else. You're right. They might. But if they were going to go, they're eventually going to go. So you might as well speed that up and get, again, get your, 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 your like nuclear tribe. Yeah. 100%. So you've given us some big things to think about in terms of telling things that we're not comfortable with. Obviously it doesn't have to be something as terrifying. It could be just, I'm afraid to be seen in media because I don't know who's going to see. I'm afraid people from my high school are going to think that I'm self-promoting, right? So Mm -hmm. let's just dial it back a little bit. How how can you encourage the people who are just even afraid to maybe post on Instagram or share anything? Like how can you, how can people get started? I was just thinking too, like podcasting. A lot of times people do podcasts because you don't have to show your face, right? You can just kind of like, oh, I'm just going to talk and who knows, who knows what's going to happen. And, and, and like you said, share on Instagram, I would say you need to go back to your why. Why am I doing this and why is it important for me? Why am I an entrepreneur? Why do I want to share my story? Or why am I in business? And if you go back to your why and really understand your why of, hey, this supports someone or, hey, this um, this this is going to change someone's life or this message somebody really needs to hear because I was in this situation before and if I would have heard this message five years ago, Wow. And so whatever your reason, whatever your why is, if you go back to that and lead with that one person, I picked one person that I was talking to, not a thousand people, not the masses. I picked one. If you go back to that one person, you go, would that change that person's life? Yes or no? Then that's how you do it. Um, as far as posting on Instagram, you're like, oh, well, what about my friends? Like, I, I have that too. I went to a really small high school. There were 72 in my graduating class. I still have that like, oh, what is so-and-so going to say that I have herpes, you know? Um, and I go back to, well, that person might have it too. That person might secretly need to hear my conversation. 
Um, maybe you post on a different account. Maybe you don't use your Alexandra Harbushka that posts pictures of my my son's th- uh, third birthday on Friday, but maybe I create another account that's just dedicated to this. Um, one of the things that we have this fear of, like, again, you're going to be on a podcast, or you're going to launch, you're going to launch your own podcast, or you're going to launch your own YouTube channel, or you're going to launch this, um, whatever you're going to launch. Chances are, like. Your first, like I just created this new, I have a new business and I created a new Instagram for that. I now have like 11 followers and it's like, you think like, oh, I'm putting all this energy, like 11 people have seen it, you know, like, okay, like you're going to build and you're going to build with your new community that, that you create. And those people are going to cheer you on. You're right. Those people from high school or college or family might be like, okay, why is she posting about this on like you know, right. Then maybe create something else and just build that. Yeah. And those people from high school are not going to buy from you. They're not your customers. I always think about our attention as entrepreneurs, as it's kind of like a bucket of water. And if you have so many holes in it, it's, it's pouring in all different directions, but the plant that really needs to be fed with water never really gets that powerful stream. Right. So Mm -hmm. you're going to have haters, no matter what, they're going to judge you for doing nothing. They're going to judge you for doing something. Might as well direct our attention into really building what we want. Right. What is your ethos or what is your like mindset hack around, around haters? Cause I'm sure when you told people that you had general herpes, there was a lot of judgment about, you know, your behaviors and how did you even deal with that? So for me, myself, so yeah, with herpes, there's a lot that goes with it because there's like, oh, well, she obviously was promiscuous. Oh, she obviously, you know, who she slept with or like all those things. And I had removed myself from the stigma. So I had broken down the stigma myself first and detached myself from it. Um, And so it no longer affected me. Does it affect me every now and then? I will say if it, if people attack my family, then yes, if they attack my husband or my son on social, yeah, I get mama bear and I get like, don't go there. But you, attacking me, I just, I, I look at it as like, well, it you're seeing something in me that affects you and it's a mirror and I'm triggering something in you is what it is. So I'm not really the issue. I'm just bringing your trigger to your forefront. Um, so again, I go back to my why. Why am I doing this? Why am I, why am I talking about it? Um, yeah, I just, I think if you detach, if you've worked through your own story and you've digested it and you're at the point of like, wow, this story, someone needs to hear again, they're not necessarily attacking you. They're attacking, it's, they're attacking themselves. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I think there's just so much noise in the universe where, you know, somebody sent me a message after they watched my PR masterclass and they said, all of my life, I felt like I had nothing to say until now. And you've given me the motivation to say that I I do have something to say. And I think there's this narrative that holds us back. I don't know if Mm -hmm. it's patriarchy, if it's just all forms of oppression that tells us that someone else always says it better or someone else always does it better. And we have to kind of wait until we're ready. Right. Potentially it's, but it's, it's, I think everybody has this like, uh, um, like, I don't know, should I do it? Should I not? I think we all have our own little insecurities. Um, and it's just a matter of like, now we're in this amazing time where if you want to tell your story, you can literally do it for free. Like you just pick up your phone, press record and like post and you can do it. Like there was no, before it was like, okay, I got to go here and I got to go here and then I got to get this. And how do I got to, how do I get on the news or how do I, how do I share my, I got to get a town hall meeting or whatever it was. Now you can just go. Yeah. But we still create those little insecurities. I talked a lot about fear in my presentation at PodFest and fear is something that we create in our mind. It can be real or imagined. And fear is something that can be really, really helpful if it's life or death. Oh my gosh, there is a wolf. I'm on a walk in the, you know, and there's a wolf. Okay, that's legit. That's a legit fear. But I'm on a walk and I'm potentially scared of a wolf showing up, but I've never ever seen a wolf. And so therefore I'm not going to go on the walk. That's an imagined fear. 
And that imagined fear can keep us from, from presenting. Or, or, or going on a walk, for example. And so what happens in our nervous system is we go into fight or flight. So we can create these fears in our mind. Oh, I can't open up. I can't go on a podcast. I can't go on social media. I can't, I can't do PR. I can't share my story because I have this imagined fear of something happening to me. And I go into fight or flight and I just freeze and I don't do anything. And what that does is it takes the blood out of our brains and it pumps it into our legs so that we can run faster. So if it really is a wolf, you can run faster. That's great. But you're being, but being like an imaginary fear of presenting or opening up about your story doesn't help your brain because you're taking all the blood from your brain to your legs. How does that, you can't run away from a podcast. Like it doesn't, anyway, so we have to, when we kind of understand what's happening Physi- like physically in our body, we go, oh, this is an imagined fear that I'm creating. And if I can start to digest that, that's going to help. Like I said, I broke down the stigma of people with herpes acted in certain behaviors. And I was like, well, that's not who I am. So why am I identifying or why am I putting myself in a bucket and walking around with shame that I never had? Now that I have herpes, I- I'm shameful. You know what I mean? So you kind of have to digest it and pull it apart and realize like, whoa, I just created this whole thing in my mind. Yep. And and you know what? Your worst fear, you can change your perspective and be like, this is actually my, not my fear anymore. This is my sword. This is my, yes. like, this, this is how I'm really going to show up in the world. I love what you said about tapping into our why. I was talking to someone who makes like cupcakes, right? She makes these beautiful cupcakes, amazing de- designs. And she's like, I don't feel like I have anything to say. I don't feel like like I know like why I'm doing this like with PR I just feel like I make cupcakes and I'm like when was the last time you made that three-year-old kid so happy right because you went to his birthday or when did you make that mom who just lost a baby and now she has her rainbow baby and you were there for her baby shower and she cried like think about your why and that's what I love about what you said is it doesn't have to be a Mm life-changing diagnosis like herpes it could be making cupcakes or candles right yeah. And and I want to shift gears now to talking about spreading your message on a bigger platform, right? You have your own podcast. You've been on so many podcasts. Mm-hmm. How do you start the process of even pitching yourself um, for podcasts? Because this is kind of what I teach is like mm-hmm. do's and don'ts. So can you walk us through like, how do you even get your mindset to the point where it's like, I'm going to pitch and it's not about a normal like business pitch that I get, but it's going to be about my herpes story. So for me, it was specifically breaking it down into what categories does my podcast touch? And, and not only that, and who do I want to touch? So do I want to touch the mommy groups that there's mommies and they maybe want to have a baby, or maybe they don't have a baby and are trying to get pregnant, or maybe they already have a child and they're worried about, oh my gosh, am I going to transmit this to my child? Um, so I tried to figure out little niches that were not just the like the obvious like sex podcast, right? So it's like, okay, how can I break my niche down into other smaller niches again to tell my message? Um, and then I I would spend some time finding the other podcast hosts that I resonated with. Like, is it a podcast I would listen to? Is it a message that I feel it's going to be um, well received? Um, So for me, again, talking about herpes, I can talk about, I can go on business podcasts, I can talk about branding, I can talk about messaging, I can talk about like the fear of your message, I can go on any health podcast, Um, I can talk about understanding a diagnosis, Um, I also am faith-based, so I can go on, you know, any faith-based podcast, so I just looked at how can my niche be broken down into smaller niches, not just the obvious like a sex podcast. So I think for anybody that is looking to be on podcasts, like we can use the cupcake one, for example. Again, that would be great. You can look at, again, mommy podcasts. You can look at, you know, creating birthday parties. You can look at branding. You can talk about passions. You can talk like all these other niches. And again, if you have a message that you want to share and, and a piece of information, like people can go home with something. What can they go home with? Um, that's, that's where you want to lead. Yeah. So, so let's just go through, let's say you're pitching for a, um, fear podcast, right? And it's kind of a general entrepreneur podcast that maybe talks about business and fear and mindset. 
how do you what is the structure of the pitch that you actually send like subject line like how long is it follow up etiquette um so you definitely need to listen to the podcast you need to listen to like more than five minutes of it you need to listen to it um I like to research the person I like to go on social media I like to just like see who the person is um and the the to see also do do they have a do they have a criteria for them is it do they say like oh I want my send it here or send you know how do they want they want a DM what do they want um, if they don't have any outline then it's an email and it's just letting them know like I'd like to be a guest on your podcast um, or something like uh, straight to the point and then you know hi introduce yourself um, I let them know that I've enjoyed listening to this episode and that episode I feel like my message could resonate. This is something I'd be interested in talking about, about, you know, fear. This is something I personally had to get over. I understand that your audience um, may have something around fear. This is a specific podcast. Um, And then I send them a one sheet. So I have a one sheet that is all broken down on potential questions. You could ask me my bio, who I am, links to my social. They can check me out. Um, and then I always follow up with like, if you'd like to talk to me, cause my topic is pretty shocking. And so some people like want to see me, um, and they want to know what I'm about. And so, Hey, if you want to set up a 15 minute phone call, that's great as well. So that's, that's kind of how the pitch goes. And some people are like, mm, nope. And the people that are very receptive to it, that's who I want to be with. That's awesome. Rejection is okay. That. It's okay. Exactly. The point is to make a strong decision, not just wishy-washy. We want either hell yes or hell no, right? Right. And how have you leveraged the podcast appearances you've been on for your own visibility, for your impact, for your marketing? So definitely something that I like to do is, is how do I, like you said, amplify what I'm doing? So right now we're, we're recording this. I also have behind the scenes. So that's, you know, we have one piece of media that's being recorded right now. Why not take it and do multiple pieces of media? In the same time, I have a videographer cut up um, and do behind the scenes. I also, um, I have a whole page on my website that has all the podcasts listed that I've been on. Um, I have an email that goes out to my email list. I have something that goes out every Friday. And if a podcast releases that Friday, it's on that. I have a community um, that's a paid community. I have that information go out. I send a follow-up email to the host that links every piece of social media content that went out so that that host can go like either reuse it for his or her own media or go like, wow, that view, that piece of content got a thousand views. Wow, that's awesome. Or that piece, oh, wow, I'd like to snap that and use that as well. Um, so I just try to reuse it in any way. And then I also reschedule it through my scheduling soft year to be promoted a year later. Like, hey, did you know I was on XYZ podcast? We talked about, you know, so anyways, it just gets repurposed and repurposed. And that's the power of social media. We we have that we put all this emphasis. Again, I spoke at Podfest. It's the 80-20. We a lot of times put 80% into the one interview, but really you should be putting 80% into the post. It's all in the post. It's and it's it's how do we now use this one piece of content that we've created in five hundred different ways? And that's really I think where the power is because you never know when someone's going to hear it. Someone could hear our interview today in two thousand twenty-seven. Yeah, exactly. And that's why I, I say more than social media, which you don't own. It's not searchable. I love getting on podcasts and guest podcasting because that is SEO. That is mm-hmm. backlinks. That is really what we're focusing on now, especially with social media's algorithm deciding one day they like us or they don't like us. So I love what you said about if you want to work smarter and not harder, get just getting onto one podcast that is six, seven, 10, 20 different ways to leverage that content and for right. long-term SEO. What are some of the amazing opportunities that you have received from guest podcasting and just pitching yourself? I would say guest podcasting and pitching. I mean, I've been able to speak at conferences. Um, you definitely have a repository of uh, like, here, this is what I've done. You know, you you have, um, yeah, you have a repository of information. Um I've been featured in the New York Post. I've been featured in some major publications just because I've levered, leveraged podcasting and other social media. And when people research, they may have found me on a podcast and then they go research and go, whoa, she has all this going on behind the scenes. Okay, this is legit. 
So um, it's not just one thing, it's multiple things. I, I love that. So is there anything you want to say to people who are listening, who are still like hesitating and being like, maybe this year will be the year that I pitch myself. How can we give them that cheer from afar, get them started? I would say do it. I would, when I, my, I first started podcasting after I went to a, I actually hosted this event. I had no idea what a podcast was. It was in 2015. It was with John Lee Dumas was the speaker. It was Michael Stelsner who hosts or puts on social media marketing world in San Diego and Mari Smith, who is like the Facebook guru. And it was these three people. I had no idea who they were. And they all said, do it and start now and be embarrassed of your first piece of content. And if you're not embarrassed by it, then you've waited too long. And I go, I go back and look at things and I'm like, ooh, like if you, you should feel cringe about what you've put out five years ago. Don't wait five years to perfect it. Right. So put it out, do it. And you will learn as you're going. Like I mentioned, I completely started a whole different business and I've been doing all of like the, 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 the type of content I've been creating with Life with Herpes is all um, just knowledge based, right? It's, it's knowledge based. It's telling my personal story. It's not a, a product. It's not a product base. And I had to relearn how to sell a product, right? How to sell like one, I said, I have a jewelry business. So how do I sell a piece of jewelry? And how do I create a post that's like five words, not a paragraph, right? And I go back and look at some of the things I created. I'm like, that's bad. Like, but I'm learning as I go. So you learn as you go and that's okay. And a lot of times if you're just starting, like I mentioned, I had like 11 followers on Instagram. Nobody really cares at this point. They're going to grow with you and they're going to, you're going to grow together. So I would say if you're not embarrassed by your first piece of content or your what you're doing, then then you're waiting too long. I love that. I always say with my PR students, we just got to get our hundred shitty drafts out the door and then we become so good at writing, which is to me a $10,000 an hour skill, not just mm -hmm. social media, which is like a $10 an hour task. You're learning these skills for life. You're learning mm -hmm. how to communicate. You're learning how to draw people into your world. That is absolutely priceless. Mm -hmm. And that will serve you in any occasion, whether it's written, uh, verbal communication, a uh, visual or, right. or in person. Right. 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 Well, just do it. Just, and, and don't get caught up in the like, oh my gosh, should I do when I'm going to start? Should I, should I go to this person or that person? Or should I be on a podcast? Should I do YouTube? Should I do Pinterest? Should I do like, just start, just start, just pick one and start. Exactly. You don't even need a podcasting mic. I mean, I'm still, no. I'm still using my webcam and, and we're, we've been podcasting for a whole year. So it doesn't, you just got to start. I love what you said about that. It's all about mindset. And I think the work that you've done with the life-changing diagnosis you had mm -hmm. was really to dig deep and really have that mental um, fitness. And now you're, I, I think at the core of what you're doing is you're really helping people with the mindset. So thank you so much right. for doing the work that you do. You're welcome. And, and you'll find whatever you like mine is a herpes diagnosis that really held me back. Right. And everybody has their own thing, whether it's, um, drug addiction, whether it's abuse, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. So how can people find you and connect with you, whether it's about herpes or sharing your story bravely, even if you're terrified or any of the things? Yeah, you can find me life with herpes. Um, and that's, that's where I'm at. So life with herpes.com. Um, if you do have herpes, I do have a free download. It is um, outbreakremedies.com, and you can go there, um, outbreakremedies.com. It's free. It's like a 12-page download that will work, walk, walk you through it. Um, and if you yeah want to find any content about – if you want to reach out to me or find any content, you can go to Life with Herpes. Awesome. Thank you so much for being on the show and for telling us that we have we all have stories within us, no matter where we are, and we need to tell it. Even if it means impacting that one person, it's it's worth it. You're changing lives. I know what I was gonna say. Mm. So we all have that one thing that stops us, and we find out as we work through it, mm. the issue was already there. So what I mean by that is people will say, I have herpes, I now I can't date. I have date, I can't date because I now have herpes. And they find out 
wow, that belief was there before herpes. So, right, the belief was there before herpes. It wasn't exactly. herpes. It was the herpes diagnosis that brought it to their forefront. So for any of our, whatever your 911 crisis is, we create a scapegoat around it. I can't do PR because this, I can't go on a podcast because of it. Well, that issue was already there and we're just using, in my case, the herpes diagnosis as a scapegoat for it. So when you start to realize that and you go, wow, I've been giving this thing so much power in my life. That's when the that's when you start to break down the barriers and are able then to go out and be on do PR. You're able to share your story. Yeah, so. I, it's all about how you look at things. When you look at things differently, everything shifts, right? Yeah. You can say, "Well, I have this diagnosis. I will never be successful. I will never be seen." You know, but then you're like, "Well, what if I chose to look at it differently?" And now everything is an opportunity for you. Right. Whereas before, everything was a dead end. Right. Thank you so much, Alex. You're welcome. Thank you, Gloria.